Welcome to the High Rise Podcast, presented by Headset, the leading data and analytics company for the cannabis industry. So who would have thought that the Benzinga Cannabis Capital Conference in Chicago next week has gotten dragged into congressional politics? Since you and I are both going to be there next week, I thought this was definitely worth talking about. I don't know if you did you catch this headline, Emily? I just did. And I just feel like we're living in a world where we could politicize like a pen in my hand. Like there's just something about how everybody wants to be so divisive these days. Oh, my gosh. No kidding. And this is, you know, congressional politics. This is Ohio politics. So Marijuana Moment uh, reported that last week, a Democratic candidate, Matt Kilboy, for this congressional seat, attacked Rep. Dave Joyce over Twitter for his participation in the conference. And in the tweet that has since been deleted was, if you elect me as your next congressman, I commit to working for you, which will not include being the keynote speaker at the Benzinga Cannabis Capital Conference. My opponent doesn't seem to have the pulse of what is hurting us in Northeast Ohio. So first off, I don't think he's actually keynoting. I looked up the agenda and Joyce is actually on a panel titled Safe Slash More, Why Social Equity is in Focus. And the panel is actually moderated by a friend of the show, Brady Cobb, uh, CEO of Sunburn, who we had on uh, the last episode talking about Sunburn. So he'll be doing that. And I think, you know, Joyce, it seems like in my limited understanding of his role in cannabis, he is pro uh, some change. I don't know to what level. And this will be interesting actually to attend this panel to kind of hear, you know, the, the social equity piece. Uh, particularly you know, what, what's interesting here is that he's a Republican and you've got the Democratic candidate going after the incumbent attacking him over cannabis, which is like, are we in like the upside down world right now? <laughs> yeah. And I love, as you know, nothing more than strange bedfellows when it comes to politics around cannabis. So I believe this is more of a bipartisan issue than people chalk it up to be. But if this is an issue where a Republican wants to stand up and support it, I am in full favor of that. In fact, at this moment, I would say I'm very open to my party affiliation while I evaluate what's going to happen in the fall. But I think that all of these things are are positives for the industry. So I thought this was a very interesting move. And I'm just also like, could we just not throw shade? It just feels like very high school instead of being a professional person. Although I have a very low opinion of politicians in general, so I'm not that surprised. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't uh, disagree there. I think it's not a good look for the Democrats in this. And uh, I think that this kill boy kind of realized that because he's backpedaled quite a bit, actually deleted the tweet and said that it had nothing to do with marijuana. And instead, Joyce should be spending his time in the district meeting with his constituents. And then he also added, I have yet to talk with a voter who lists marijuana as a key priority. So he says nothing to do with marijuana. He just shouldn't be doing this conference, you know, just any conference. But at the same time, nobody in my state cares about uh, marijuana as a priority, which is completely wrong because Marijuana Moment also reported earlier in August that Ohio is looking to decriminalize in a variety of uh, areas of the state. And that's going to be on the ballot, right, in a big way uh, in Ohio. So seven more cities will decide uh, on decrim. And I think that's in addition to a number of cities that voted last year uh, in November to decrim. So it's obviously enough of a thing that it's on the ballot in seven cities you know, people do care about this stuff. And I think to be so dismissive of it is not a good look. He should have just backpedaled and, and realized, yeah, he, the wrong wrong thing to attack over, uh, but then to kind of dig at the same time is not great. But since fall is in the air, at least in Seattle, I think, you know, down in, in California, it's quite a heat wave for you, I'm hearing. But I thought, you know, politics, it, it's a good time to talk about it because it's going to be really crazy over the next few months. So I thought with all the political chatter that's happening, we're going to hear a lot of cannabis rhetoric. So I thought, you know, this is a, the start of many more things to come, I am sure. Yeah, I just hope that, and by the way, <laughs> maybe rebrand. Killboy is like a bum out of a name. but oh, I know, whatever. I thought the same thing. Like how, do, you know, when you get a last name like Baker, it's like, oh, your family was a baker. But yeah, Killboy. Hmm. Killboy, Killjoy. But so I think that, you know, for once, I wish that the politicians would pay attention because you just articulated it perfectly. The voters have weighed in. And these things, by the way, get on the ballot through, I'm pretty sure, signature drives in Ohio. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can't think of a better way to count your constituents than people who act. I mean, think about how many things you, you're loath to sign in this world because of 
who's approaching you with a clipboard or whatever it might be, approaching you at your home or calling you. And so if you can get constituents to actually take that step to sign these ballot initiatives to get it on the ballot, then it's a pretty strong will of the voters. So I would say he's he's drastically underestimating the importance of this issue. But it will be interesting as we are heading into the fall, if these groups will pay attention to the polling and pay attention to what the constituents really do want around this issue. Just so unique to see a Democratic candidate attacking the cannabis issue, which isn't a great look, but it is nice, I mean, to see a Republican supporting it. And I think that's what it's going to take in the end. It's going to take both sides. Uh, and it does impact both sides. I mean, every state, you know, has some sort of regulation around it, right? Whether medical, adult use, or even just decrim. And uh, so it does impact everybody in, in different ways. So it's good to see that there's this kind of bipartisanship happening, but it's really annoying when, when they're using it to attack. So we'll see how this, this pans out. One area, you know, also on the political side that happened this week was around the Pennsylvania Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman. Have you followed any of this stuff? It's so funny. I'm sitting so far away from Pennsylvania, but I see so much of this in my uh, Twitter feed, this like shitposting fight that's going on as he's campaigning for Senate between him and uh, Dr. Oz. I don't know if you've seen, have you seen a lot of this? It's all this like, it's pretty hilarious where they're just like going back and forth over their posts, their media, just really digging at each other. Fetterman's really leaning into this, like Oz is actually from New Jersey, which I think is like sensitive territory given like it's just across the, the river there. But uh, anyways, I, I feel like I know more about it than I need to given where I'm sitting, but I think every state matters as we you know saw in the last election, uh, as far as you know, which way these these seats land. Last week, Fetterman mentioned that he was going to talk to Biden over uh, a Labor Day meeting about cannabis, in particular about decrimming cannabis. And it sounds like that conversation happened. The unfortunate thing is that we have no idea on the other side, like what what Biden's response was to this conversation and how much of it, you know, landed on deaf ears or, or didn't. And that's unfortunate that we can't see that. The, the only bit of news in here is that um, they they went from like a rescheduling to, you know, complete uh, descheduling conversation, which is good. And I mean, as an eternal optimist, I've got to hope that maybe we'll be surprised. You know, I think a lot of people were surprised with, uh, at least I was surprised with the tuition uh, relief for students. You know, it's something that people have talked about a long time, long time, and then it seemed to just kind of come out of nowhere. Like a little bit of heads up, a few days, but then it was like, here it is. Maybe we'll get some surprise going into the election season because, I mean, we're all disappointed. I mean, you're talking about, you know, you're maybe a free agent here at the rate that that that, that side is not doing anything. And, you know, it's it's quite frustrating, right? So maybe there'll be something. But when I first saw this headline, I thought to myself, like, you know, I'm, I don't know, it's just like more lip service, you know, more sound bites, you know, for someone who's who's trying to campaign and get this seat. And it, you know, maybe drives voters because he's talking about it. But like, does anything actually happen? But then like, you know, I'm trying not to be such a cynic and I'm thinking, well, you got to have these conversations. You know, you have to, you have to chat, you have to nudge, right? So I think it's in all a net positive, but I, I don't think we're going to see anything tomorrow based on this conversation. No, I don't. And the fact that they had it behind closed doors and that we don't really know what, what came of it. I am very tired of everyone talking about it because it's just, what, what, what is there left to say? There was a lot of information about the net positive impact of legalization. But if you're not ready to go for legalization, at least just all we're saying is allow it to be banked. And you know, it's really interesting. So I'm at the code conference in LA this week. I was listening to the national uh, security person for the, I'm going to find her name, but for, for the president. And they were talking about the impact of having crypto running largely unchecked is Ann Neuberger, Deputy Assistant to the President and uh, Deputy of Nat National Security. And so I think that, you know, one of the things around this is like, she admitted that crypto, I mean, we all know cryptocurrency was kind of built, or like Bitcoin, crypto, the blockchain, all of this was built around the dark web. It was largely used for Silk Road and for moving illicit, you know, human trafficking, gun trafficking, all of these arms trafficking around the world so that you couldn't be tracked and traced. And one of the things they noted is that there's increased ransomware attacks happening and increased 
cyber attacks on a national security level. Well, where is that being funded? It's largely being funded through crypto accounts. And so it's like, I was kind of glad that she like brought it back to this discussion of what's going on on the crypto side, not to mention all of the wild investor issues that have gone on and exploitation of investors in the name of this like hype cycle around around crypto. But where I'm going with this is like, that's gone. So, and she even said it, which I almost like, lost it. I almost like flipped a chair because I was, she was like, it's too big to stop it from happening. And I was like, oh, you mean too big to fail? Like what we saw in the, the great financial crisis with the subprime mortgage uh, lending crisis? Like, are we, are we serious right now? But, but all of that aside, it's just such a simple request from a tangible domestic industry that we'd like to participate in the regulated banking system. And then we're, st and, should, and they're like stumped on how to navigate what's going on on crypto so wildly unchecked. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to manifest rational thinking going into this fall <laughs> season. <laughs> safe, safe Banking Plus would be an enormous coup for this country. It would improve our tax collection. We could potentially have capital markets access. There's a lot of things we could see. So I'm going to manifest rational thought on behalf of the politicians. And I'm hoping that they're doing what they do, which is holding an ace in the back pocket as we get closer going to the polls and pull this little baby out and get something done. So we'll see. But that's a long answer to how I'm thinking about all of this. Uh, I think that's a great answer. I think we will be surprised probably by the rhetoric. I, I do think that it's got to be top of mind. I mean, it is something that in many ways carried a lot of the election last time. And I feel like not much has happened right at the federal level. And so it's kind of, they got to make good. There's been so much back and forth. It's just like, you can't keep doing that or just talking about it and knowing like it's not going to get through. They obviously know like what has a chance and what doesn't have a chance, what's posturing, what's not. And I think obviously it's it's up to the voters to to start to demand it. I'm having a hard time with just like the cognitive dissonance between, you know, living in a world of of legal cannabis, but having it still be illegal at the federal level with so many states now and, and so many places. It's not like it was back, you know, when I first got in this space in 2010, where it was like, you'd go to a state and be lucky if they had something like California, maybe Colorado, but like, you know, New York, New Jersey, you know, there, there's a large share of the population that live in adult use. There's a even larger share that live in uh, medical, yet they haven't done anything. So I think, you know, maybe we'll be surprised. Again, I'm an eternal optimist and, and, these things like seem like they take forever and then they they just show up. It's like that saying about, you know, how do you go bankrupt? It's like very slowly and then all of a sudden, right? It's like it's it's gonna feel like that with this, right? Like, oh, you know, some federal change. Yeah, it took forever, but then it was like it happened, right? And so I, I've got to hope that it does. And if it does, I'm gonna give you all the credit for manifesting it. <laughs> yeah, because I was just thinking about how this tends to work where it's like I've been banging my head against the wall for so long and then it happens and I'm like, yeah, it's to DNR my cold dead heart. I don't know if I can get it going again, but we'll we'll hope for the best and, and I will do some manifesting work. How's that? I like it. And I don't think this is going to be the last time we talk about politics. So start manifesting away. Thanks for listening to the High Rise Podcast presented by Headset. For more information on Headset, visit headset.io.